Hello everyone, this is me, Ahmad El Garhi, and I will be your moderator for today's session. Today we have Ms. Yusra Ismail, and she is HR manager in one of the most promising technology companies on MENA region and the United States. She has more than 10 years experience in diversified industries. MBA in global management from Sleska University. Also, she is certified trainer and coach. Ms. Yosra, the mic is yours. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank everybody who's attending the session now. Uh, let me start right away by telling you that it's gonna be a journey. Uh, we are going to take it in four steps. As Dr. Ahmed uh, introduced the um, sessions, it's gonna be uh, first, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to secure yourself a job in a very competitive market and uh, then how to outstand by presenting yourself well in the CV and how to present yourself in an interview after you've got, uh, you're invited to an interview. And lastly, after you are hired, how are you gonna uh, like uh, build up relations uh, and succeed as an employee at this job? So uh, the first step today on our journey will be um, uh, like divided into two parts. The first part uh, is uh, related to you as a person, the graduate or the undergraduate. And the second part will be related to the market. What type of markets we have uh, to uh, like uh, penetrate to be able to get a job. Uh, so for the part related to the person, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story, how I started um, uh, in the HR field, because, because it was a, like a story that can inspire you, because I had many struggles as an undergrad and as a graduate, till I uh, decided that HR will be the field for me. <clears throat> and related to the second part, we have two uh, types of markets the advertised job market and the hidden job market. And it's very important that you understand this starting, like uh, I'm not sure if everybody's a graduate uh, who's attending or some of us are not uh, graduates, but it's very important that you understand the two types of markets. So you'll be able to be ready for both of them because uh, it needs different skills to, uh, to, to be able to uh, compete in both of them. So, um, let me start by giving you a brief about uh, myself. When I was an undergrad, uh, I was really active. I used to participate in many and different act student activities. Um, and part of doing this, and now like um, I'm 15 years older, uh, I'm graduated from 15 years uh, ago, um, I know that like doing this and I didn't have like an intention and I wasn't doing this because I know uh, I knew uh, anything uh, then, but I was active as a, I was an active person and I joined many activities, but like looking back, I understood that doing this gave me an itch because I was able to try myself in different roles. I worked in, in like a, as a public relations, as a sales, as a trainer, as an HR. It gave me an itch to try myself in different skill sets and different roles. And doing this as an undergrad, um, I can do it. But can you, if you can imagine, if you're if you are a graduate and you're doing this at a real job, like you're doing it for two months as an accountant and then leaving it for another job for two months. So. Um, Doing this as an undergrad gives you an edge to try to understand more about what do you like to do. And um, uh, I'm referring to this because um, I always say that this period of my life, I was, I'm not going to say it's going to be lost, but as an undergrad, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with my life. And I'm, I'm sure many uh, young people have the same feeling. Uh, they chose maybe a, a college or a, a major to study, and uh, they are 100% sure this is what they want to do for the rest of their lives, and others have doubts. And I was the, one of the people who had doubts. I studied English literature. I loved it so much, but I knew that there is more that I can do, or this is not it for me. So as an undergrad, again, I was telling you, I used to uh, join many student activities and I was really active and I went um, for internships. 
uh, during the summer, I went for internships in different uh, companies and I didn't have uh, like uh, connections in each company to, to let me in, but I went to each company and I applied and I was really keen to uh, make use of my summertime. So um, like, let's say that I had four years of college and each year I was adding up information and knowledge for myself in different, um, in different fields. And looking back at this period of time, um, experiment, experiment and getting more experience in different places uh, led me when I, I got my, uh, my certificate and I got graduated, I worked for a while in the customer service field and um, it really gave me a lot of uh, skills because if you're communicating with someone and you can't see them, it's over the phone and um, you're only uh, like leading the communication through uh, voice it gives you many skills uh, on better communication because most of the communication, uh, if we're having like uh, the, the factors that's affecting communication on a pie chart, part, uh, the hugest part will be on body language. And you're not seeing anybody through the phone. So this phase of my life was really uh, helping me. Uh, and then I have decided after that, that HR is the field for me. Let me say that this, uh, like, um, this decision ends the, 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 the phase of my life where I didn't know exactly what I want, wanted to do. And it was all about experimentation and trying myself in different things. And when I decided that HR is going to be the field for me, I started the planning phase. This is the second phase I was talking about earlier, that uh, as a person, you're going to have a part of your life where you're just experiencing a lot and you're not having any, any plans yet. And then the second part, which you're having a plan and you know exactly what you want to do. So I started making a plan of uh, getting exactly what is the job need, uh, job uh, description needed if I want to start as a human resource, as a professional HR uh, person. And I remember getting all the job descriptions, all the knowledge needed, all the skills needed, and I started to study them very well, and I started to compare myself to this. So let's say I need to have communication skills, uh, specific knowledge at HR, et cetera. And I realized I only have one of the three. So I started gaining the other two uh, through courses, through um, uh, shadowing. Um, this will take me to the other uh, part when I, I didn't really care to get money at first. I just cared uh, to to go and have an intern in a specific company to uh, gain experience in HR. And um, let me tell you that one of the important things I believe uh, of gaining knowledge is having a mentor. And I didn't have this privilege when I was young. So I was like always shadowing with everybody who I believed is uh, good at HR. Uh, because the first uh, job I got was not even a job, it was an intern. And I spent all the time there and I didn't care what I'm doing as long as I'm learning. And time passed by and I started to get more knowledge. I had really started to have a value in the HR field. And uh, this is, I'm just talking about the very start. And then I got promoted. I made sure to work in different industries to gain knowledge and experience. And uh, years went by and I've been uh, working in uh, managing people and helping people out for many years now. Um, okay. Um, if we are going to take maybe a lesson learned from the two phases that I passed through, the first phase uh, where I, I give myself the uh, space to experiment and try different jobs and to go for interns. And I went for different uh, uh, like uh, models in, um, and I'm, I'm giving an example in, in Egypt because I'm based in Egypt. 
in, in college, we have many models that is imitating companies in, uh, uh, but in college, like you are gonna be a CEO for a, a very small student activity, but you are acting as a CEO. So it's giving you the itch to try yourself in uh, strategic thinking, decision-making, delegation, you know, all the skills that's needed from you um, and is expected from you uh, when you join a company for real. Um, again, uh, the lessons learned from this phase was that actually when I graduated, I had many skills that others lacked because they didn't uh, give, you, give themselves this uh, period of time of trying trial and error and um, made, like trying different uh, roles. For the second part, Having a plan, I uh, remember doing a CV and I went approached people in companies and I was telling them uh, why they should give me a chance to have an intern in their companies because you know interns if they are if they have zero, zero knowledge uh, it's going to be it's going to be very challenging for their uh, the, the real employees uh, like uh, to help them and and get them to learn more. So um, I was trying to present myself as I'm not a, I'm going to waste your time. I'm going to actually help you and you're not going to pay anything because I want to learn as if I'm like paying for a course or something. <clears throat> um, the, the skill that I really appreciate I, uh, having uh, at a very young age uh, was determination. I was determined because I'm not going to like tell you it's, it was a piece of cake. I really approached many, many uh, companies and people, some people didn't, uh, didn't respond to my emails or my calls. Some uh, others uh, really uh, met me, but they, they weren't, uh, they didn't have the time or, or something. And I like, let me remember, maybe it was almost over 50 calls or 50 uh, trials to get an intern. And uh, finally, I succeeded. <clears throat> so uh, let me uh, now go to the, uh, the other part of the uh, competition. It's the market itself. We have two types of markets that we have to be ready for uh, to be able to get a job. The advertised job market is the one that we all know. Uh, it's the one where you go to uh, the recruitment platform, um, Again, I'm not quite sure which platforms you have, but here in Egypt, we have maybe, uh, you know, of course, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is one of the uh, platforms that you can go and apply for a job and uh, check for open vacancies. Um, this is the very normal uh, channel that you can get a job and to be able to compete in this place, I consider it like uh, as a, a competition, you have to be ready with a very, very well organized CV that's presenting your skills and presenting yourself uh, as a very good caliber related to the skills and the uh, job description needed and the role needed. Okay, how about the other part? Uh, it's called the hidden job market. If you can think with me before I re uh, reveal what does it mean, if you can write in the comments, what do you think is a hidden job market means? I'm going to give you a minute if um, anybody wants to join, maybe give me um, their opinion or input about what is a hidden job market. What does it mean? Okay, we have a very good, uh, some very good definitions here. Thank you, guys. Exactly. A hidden job market, it's, a, uh, it's um, like the jobs that are not advertised on any platform exactly it's not published and why do we um, why do employers and go for this um, market that they have a job role and they don't advertise it there are two main reasons uh, the first reason is to avoid all the costs uh, and the fees uh, that they uh, pay for when they use one of the platforms and uh, usually employers pay to get their jobs published 
And for HR, the, uh, we have uh, to calculate the cost that we uh, uh, like. We invest in all the steps we're doing to get um, an employee, starting from the fees for the platform, the time of the interview. Uh, if, if I'm an HR a generalist and I'm doing the, the interview and it goes for one hour, uh, so I'm paying uh, one hour of my time, of my salary for this interview, and this is part of the cost <clears throat> spent on the, on the interviewing process. And many, many other costs that uh, calculated, and usually it, it, it's, you're not only interviewing one, you're inter interviewing many others, many other ca calibers, plus assessments. Many companies use platforms for online assessments. And uh, for example, one of the uh, platforms uh, called HR Avatar, this one, uh, it costs you dollar, uh, $40 per uh, exam. So you can imagine the, all the costs that uh, the employer has to go through to be able to find the best caliber. Another thing, another reason that lets employers go for this uh, market, the hidden market, is that, and I'm, go I'm gonna give you an example to understand um, the mentality that, uh, like th that leads, leads them to, to take this decision. Remember, um, um, just imagine if you're buying a mobile phone, a new mobile phone, and most people will go and take their uh, friends' opinions and ask them, okay, Tell me, uh, what is the mobile phone that you've got? Give me a review about it. Tell me how it's performing with you. And they are gaining experience from or getting opinions from their uh, friends and colleagues. Another example, the same uh, example. Uh, if you're using old Facebook, you're going to uh, um, see that Facebook started to uh, put um, recommendations uh, for you to buy stuff based on your friends' uh, choices, like you're going to find an ad on Facebook, and it's uh, giving you a, a small comment at the top of the ad that your friend uh, so-and-so bought from this uh, place, marketplace, and we believe that you're going to like uh, the stuff as well. The two examples give you an idea of how people prefer uh, to have a review or a referral on somebody you already know or from somebody you already know. A hidden job market is, uh, go, uh, is getting a job through a referral that I know uh, I work for a company and I know that this place is hiring now. So uh, you ask me if, uh, if, uh, if, you're, if I'm interested to apply and I give you my CV and you put it uh, with the, uh, give it to the HR to get me through the hiring process. Um, like, I'm, a, I'm referring you because I have worked with you. I know exactly how you're performing and I'm sure that you're good caliber. So I'm referring to you, I'm referring you to the uh, company I'm working for. Most people, uh, in the, uh, I mean, in, in the companies will feel more comfortable hiring someone through a referral because it's gonna save time for me to try you, um, you know, in Egypt here, uh, yes, more trusted applicants. Um, not necessarily more trusted, but um, as I was saying, in Egypt here, at the start of the contract, when you are uh, working um, in a company, you have a three months trial period. It's like called the probation period. I'm giving you all the benefits, everything, but I'm uh, as well, giving myself a space that if I realized that you weren't the, the, uh, the employee I hired, not the skills that you were telling me about, because a lot of people can sell themselves very well at the interview, but based on lies. Like he's saying, I'm very good at communication, but he's actually not good. So I'm giving myself as an employer uh, a space of three months to try you out. And then you are 100% fully hired uh, and you have a contract of one year to continue with me. So as a referral, uh, I'm kind of having already an idea about how are you performing as an employee. And this is ex exactly what is a hidden job market all about. So 
as an as a, me as a graduate how i'm going to be able to get through this hidden job market if i'm not connected so going back to how to be able to um, to get a job at this very very competitive uh, job market and i believe it's very competitive because it's not advertised you don't have the chance to compete unless you are uh, you are invited or referred by someone and the key to be able to do this is starts at any time so I'm, I'm, i don't want to tell you of course it's better to start as an undergrad but you can start at any time is to build connections how are you going to build connections it's through uh, getting to know more people in uh, student activities knowing your uh, professors i'm talking about everybody around you it's uh, it's a skill how to build good connections with everybody your professors at college uh, joining student activities and knowing people around you not just going there attending lectures and doing nothing but attending the lectures and not communi communicating not participating um, joining interns and by the way many people join interns but as i was telling you they are just sitting there on their desks doing nothing communicating with nobody so like if I, if i'm the one uh, responsible for their intern and you've asked me after they have left about them maybe i don't even remember them they didn't leave like um something memorable about them so how do you build a, a connection or how do you uh, build a, a good relation with somebody so after for example if if you've been an intern at my uh, company and you are graduated now and you have left an impact, I remember you very well. And then I know I'm hiring the same position that you have been trained on. I'm going to give you a call. Uh, uh, tell me, are you looking for a job or did you uh, are you hired by now? And if you're not hired, I'm going to invite you for an interview. This is part of having good, good connections. And how do you do that? Let me take you back to the uh, experimentation phase I have been talking about, where you are experimenting and you're experiencing and you're trying to understand yourself well in different roles and different stuff. Um, I need you to be able to know your edge. Um, let's, let's say that you as a person is a brand and you need to understand what's your itch, meaning what are your positive sides, what makes you different uh, from everybody around you. One of the uh, steps I've, I've, uh, I've took to, to be able to do this is I used to have self-assessments. One of the very best uh, self-assessments I like is called Myers-Briggs. Uh, the website is called 16 Personalities. I can share the website on the chat. If you uh, got to this website and you've answered around 45 questions, it's going to give you an insight about your personality sides, different sides of your personality. You as a, uh, uh, strengths and weaknesses, uh, you as a friend, you as, a, as an employee, everything. It's, most, most of people who've done this assessment, they say it's 90% correct. It applies to them. You, maybe we don't have all the time in the world to try everything, but we can help ourselves by doing such assessments, getting feedback, getting free feedback from your professors, from your friends, to know exactly what are the edges, what, what is uh, the thing that makes you stand out as a person. And you need to start working on building yourself as a brand. And I'm not talking about something fancy. I'm, I'm just saying that you have to, to understand yourself very well to have um, uh, like your features. You need to understand your features very well, your personality features very well, and you start to tell your story. And this is very important. It is that you know how to tell your story. If you are in an internship, for example, at a company and nobody knows anything about you, 
nobody knows who are you what do you like what hobbies do you like if you if you were um, if you work if you have any uh, you play any sports versus someone who's telling their story and my story means um who are you what are your values what do you like what you don't like what what are you good at this opens up different uh, like uh, chances for you and not only for the job not only for the job it's for everything else um so back to what we, we what i was saying now how are you going to do this after you understand yourself you give yourself all the places to go and experiment and you get exposure to different situations you have to sit down and have a notebook and write down the uh, the values write down uh, your um, edges positives negatives everything and start working on the negatives start to enhance uh, the uh, positives and formulate a story that you can share um, of course, it's not going to be like a recorded story, but at least you know what's the story that you have in life, what makes you different. For example, I can give you a part, a little part about how, um, how I'm telling my story. I am very passionate about psychology. And I used as a young girl, a young girl like 13, 14 years old, to read huge books of psychology. And I actually, I was really like uh, into this that I, uh, when I was going to school, I used to try um, the, the tricks, the psychological tricks on my teachers and my colleagues. And I'm, uh, it's, it's not something um, like um, tricky. It's just a very simple uh, uh, stuff in psychology. Like, for example, if you're if, if anybody here is interested in psychology, uh, they are telling you if you're talking to someone and they looked right up, he's, uh, he's just uh, uh, remembering. And if it's to the right, uh, left up, he's just creating stories just to, um, to know uh, if they're lying or not, stuff like this. And I had this huge passion when I was young. Uh, and I, um, I loved anything related to people, anything related to uh, helping people, understanding people more. And this was the very start of, uh, that helped me later on to realize that HR is the field for me because I have the space to help people out, to understand people through interviews. Every, everything is related to people in HR. And I grew up, I grew up, um, so, sorry guys for the interruption uh, so as I was telling you and um, I uh, I got uh, through years and uh, starting uh, like high school I started to go on interns I started to go uh, I worked as a sales I remember I went to sell stuff and I was experimenting if my psychology tricks is going to help me to negotiate and convince people to buy from me. It's all revolving around psychology, understanding people, helping people out. And uh, then I got to college. I was really active and you know the rest of the story. Um, this is part of my story. People know about me that I like psychology to that extent since I was a little girl and that I love helping people. And there are other sides of my story that I didn't share with you, but I believe if we have more time or we are working together, you're going to know more about me more and more. And the um, part of having a strong brand is to understand yourself more than anybody else around you. Be open to get feedback, but you have to believe that you know yourself better than anybody. And the feedback, it's gonna help you to know how you are seen externally. So if people see you differently than you actually are, you're gonna work on fixing this. Again, so now you understand yourself, you are building good connections at work, at, um, at college and with your professors, etc. cetera. Um, you are uh, 
building good connections when you are at different companies. Now you are graduate, you are going to be having at least the edge of being uh, referred to in uh, job interviews in a hidden market that's not published uh, on any platform. Um, um, like uh, now you are backing yourself in uh, both markets uh, regarding the advertised job market, we're going to um, have more to talk about this uh, next session because we are going to talk about the CV, how you're going to write the CV, how you're going to present yourself on paper and uh, other platforms that are reflecting uh, your uh, personality and your career um, on uh, LinkedIn, on the CV, uh, stuff like this. Um, guys, I'm, uh, I'm interested to, to know if you have any questions re regarding the points that I have uh, mentioned, if anything I have maybe missed or something, if you need to understand th something more, you can ask on the uh, comments or the chat or the questions. Okay, Yusuf is asking uh, how to search for internships. Uh, many companies, um, Many companies, they, uh, they have uh, internships popul uh, popul uh, advertised on uh, their websites and on Facebook. I have to, to tell you something. I was from uh, the generation that uh, before, before this generation, I was from the generation of 2005 and six, and this was before the Facebook uh, breakthrough. Uh, so now I believe you have more facilities and more tools to, to get um, opportunities more than that I had. So maybe I had this struggle of going to the companies and talking to people, stuff like this. But now you're going to check on Facebook. Uh, many companies are very active on uh, their uh, Facebook pages, on social media, on their company websites. And... Again, if you are having any connections in a student activities, usually companies reach out for, uh, for, um, for this type of people that they are very active and they are working on student activities. So I really, uh, I really encourage you all, if you have the chance to participate in a student activity is to do so because it's very important. Okay, let me check another question here. How could I get a remote internship opportunity which will get me employed inside after done with my internship period? Um, no, I'm not quite sure if, if I understand. What do you mean by a remote internship opportunity? If you can explain more, uh, that will be helpful. Yes, uh, regarding your question, does these companies hire from all uh, the countries? Well, it's based on the company that you are looking to work for. Uh, another thing, maybe I forgot to tell you that during my search, my job search, when I was still penetrating the market of HR, I had a list of maybe 10 to 15 companies that I am willing to work for. Um, I am willing to go and present myself to uh, help me and have an intern there. Uh, and my choice based on maybe the values that they present, maybe some people in HR that I wanted to work with. So it's going to be up to you. You would decide which company that you're willing to go and approach and check if they have uh, internships available for undergraduates or graduates. And by the way, not only internships, uh, I'm talking about I'm talking about any opportunity that you can uh, apply for. For example, many um, many governmental uh, entities offer um, offer youth to participate in uh, activities. Uh, like for example, again in Egypt here we have the youth uh, um, government is. Uh, offering uh, opportunities, many opportunities for youth to participate in the youth forum, for example, to participate in uh, organizing some forums for the government. Uh, 
so participate in anything that's letting you um, like letting you to get exposure to know more people and um, to answer your question to make sure i'm answering your question you have to choose the company because it's based on the company's need if a company only needs people from its own con uh, country so it's not going to be hiring outside the, uh, the country if it's uh, like something more multinational it's going to be hiring in different offices so it's based on what is your uh, major what is the ca the career that you're looking for uh, so I have another question here. Okay, ma'am, how LinkedIn works for the French graduates? LinkedIn is the most professional place that you can uh, connect with different people for a professional uh, uh, relation. So um, you will find uh, you have to have a very good, uh, well put together LinkedIn profile and CV, even you are an undergraduate, and you have to build it up with some of the stuff that you're doing, this is why I'm telling you, you have to make your uh, years of uh, college really rich, not only to, uh, to concentrate on studies. And I know some of the faculties is not gonna give you this space because they are really um, maybe hard or something like medical school, but still at medical school, you will be uh, uh, going for, I believe, during the summer to work in hospitals. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, if I, if I have here anybody in the um, medical field. So it's very important to have, uh, we'll put together LinkedIn and CV, and this will be, we will be talking about uh, this specifically next time about the CV. How to utilize this platform, LinkedIn or Indeed? LinkedIn, Many professionals, um, including myself, I put a lot of opportunities, internships, job vacancies, many posts, many stuff that will be very helpful uh, for uh, undergraduates, uh, students, and fresh graduates. Um, maybe I consider myself a mentor because I have been through a lot uh, till I am now a well-developed professional. So like, um, you have to follow people who are in the same field that you are willing to work for, uh, to work in, and to, to make sure that your LinkedIn is really presentable and present, presenting your uh, expertise, your skills, yourself as a fresh graduate or undergraduate. Um, another thing I remember now, again, to tell you, I believe that having a mentor is one of the very important things that will help you through your professional career. I didn't have this chance when I was younger, but I believe, um, for example, if you are working, if you are studying at a specific faculty, you can approach uh, one of your professors uh, and ask them to be your mentor on a professional uh, level. And many professors believe in this as well. And it's going to be their choice, by the way. You don't have, if you ask them to, to be your mentee, they can say, maybe I, I don't have the time. Maybe I can help you on, um, on uh, like uh, little occasions. But it's worth asking if you found a professor that you really trust and you believe they are successful at the same field you're interested in. You can ask them to be your mentor help you with some decisions that you may be uh, taking uh, throughout your career. I hope I answered your question. Let me um, try to read the rest. Uh, okay, Ahmad Sheikh is asking about student internship, internships internationally. Um, well, I'm not quite sure, but you, you can look, search. One of the very important skills for you to, to dig deeper in the market is to research, to make some search uh, and look up companies' names, look up the opportunities offered in which com uh, countries. I believe there are a lot of opportunities, but you have to dig and search for it. How can we really deal the issue of experience? We have always come across jobs, but asking for high experience level, and we always shy away. <clears throat> this has always kept hopes down. Yes, and I totally understand your point because I have uh, 
I have the same struggle because um, you have to um, give yourself the edge before you are graduated. You have to, um, I'm not quite sure if I'm uh, pronouncing your name right, Amos. You have to give yourself the edge by uh, putting yourself in um, um, places to gain experience, even as an undergraduate. And I'm not quite sure which faculty are, are you studying or you graduated from, but let's say if you are um, maybe an engineer, you need to go and ask uh, companies to uh, give you a, a, an opportunity for an intern. It's not gonna be uh, the easiest, it's not gonna be a piece of cake, but you have to, to work and do effort to get the opportunity. And uh, part of the skills that we are as well want to, uh, to acquire is the business skill, not only the technical skill, but the business skill. The business skill is um, uh, how you're communicating, how you're presenting your uh, uh, like ideas, how you are uh, uh, helping people out, how you are delegating if you're a manager. And all of this is... Uh, given a chance, you're going to give, be given a chance to acquire through uh, imitating the business environment in student activities. Guys, I want you to share with me if you have, uh, if you have student activities at, at your colleges uh, in Nigeria and in different countries. Uh, sure, Abdurrahman, uh, I'm going to be sharing my LinkedIn profile, sure. Um, remote internships means working from home. Abu Bakr, um, remote internships doesn't apply for all the uh, fields. Uh, for example, in HR, you may be able to have a remote internship. It's not going to be the best uh, exposure, but you may have it because HR can be handled online. But if it's something technical, you have to be there. You have to be there to, uh, to, to work with your hands, to, to watch and shadow uh, other uh, SMEs doing their job. Uh, can I send you my CV to comment on? Sure. Um, this is Haitham. And um, yes, sure, you can send it to me and stay tuned for next session. The next session, we're going to go through all the mistakes that we have in our CVs. I have uh, checked over 20,000 CVs because I've been working in the HR field for over uh, 12 years. And I as well worked in HR before I was a graduate in the student activities. So I have uh, checked over 20,000 CVs. I have made many, many interviews. And these, I've seen many mistakes people are doing. Uh, very, very smart young men and young women, and they were not presenting themselves in the best way to be chosen. Um, uh, and next session and the, the session after, the two sessions that are uh, we're handling how to present yourself in, in a CV and in the interview, it's going to help you to be able to present yourself because you may be having the knowledge, you may be having the skills, but you don't know how to, to, to show it. And HR, I promise, HR people really want you to help them in taking the right decision. Okay. Um, how we can look for a mentor and what we should do if he review, refuses? Islam asks. Um, so a mentor is a person with a good experience in the field that you want to work in. And you can meet them anywhere. I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was young, I didn't have uh, this privilege of having a mentor, but later, years later, I was having, uh, I was really, really I'm usually I'm a, a very keen person on, uh, on studying and knowledge. And I, I've gained many certificates. I'm taking always courses on uh, online platforms till now. I, I love, I love studying and I love knowledge. <clears throat> and one of the, um, courses I have been attending uh, in the HR fields, I have found that the trainer is a mentor for me. His uh, values, his, the way he's thinking, the way he's went through his life and uh, career decisions. So after the course, it was a three days course, I went there and I approached him and I told him that 
I believe mentorship is a very important thing, and I'm still uh, in the med uh, phase of my career. It was like maybe seven years ago. And I asked him if he got the time to uh, to have uh, like a quick meeting because uh, at this time I was taking a decision in switching jobs. I got an offer from another company and I didn't know um, how to take the decision. Like So I approached him and I asked him if he can help me take the decision. And he was uh, open to the idea. And I went and met him and he helped me out with the decision. And I asked him afterwards, if he's okay, if I got, uh, if I uh, refer to him whenever I have a tough situation, maybe I need his opinion in. And he said, yes. If he said, no, I don't have the time, it was okay, totally, it's his decision. And I'll totally respect this. And, um, and I would have looked up for another mentor. It's, it's totally fine, don't take it personal. Uh, don't take it personal at all and give him a space to tell you if you've got the time or not. Um, and please don't, as again, again, don't take it personal, don't be pushy. If he said no, don't keep approaching him. It's totally fine and you have to respect this. <clears throat> okay, a friend told me about the harsh treatment from a company where he works in Kuwait. What are the regulatory bodies set aside for these issues and how do we go about it? Um, okay, I hope I understand your question right. You mean that he's treated in a harsh way and uh, you are asking about if there are places to uh, help him um, with uh, like to take his right or something. Uh, if this is the question, uh, if he is uh, a foreigner, if he's not a Kuwaiti citizen, um, I believe the embassy will help him. Uh, I believe there should be a contract he signing on, on it. Um, if it's harsh to that extent, maybe going to the embassy will help. Um, again, I hope I understand the question correctly. Um, I don't want to give a comment unless I really understand it. Understand it. <clears throat> so if you can clarify, or if my answer is okay with you, just let me know. Some companies always ask you to drop your social media handles during interviews. What is the idea behind the request? Um, you mean that they ask you for your Facebook account? Okay, this is, if, if this is your question, uh, I believe this is a very um, uh, tricky uh, thing that a company will do, but uh, I believe it's not 100% correct. Uh, again, if I'm answering a different question, let me know if, uh, if I understood right. They are asking you for your Facebook account. Uh, I think companies will, will do that for to check on your um, opinions, maybe. But to be honest, I don't think this is correct. No, no company I have ever worked for or um, I've never heard about a company that would ask you about your Facebook account to check on uh, your account or maybe opinions of something. This is not correct. And um, let me know if they really do this. You can refuse. And it's, 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 you can refuse totally because what, what's per, uh, Facebook is a very personal account and you can uh, like uh, ex, uh, express your opinions freely. But uh, I would recommend if, if the company is basing their opinion or your Facebook account posts or stuff, it's not very good. It's not a very good company to join, to be honest. Which steps we should follow after graduation to find a job outside and inside the country? Okay. <clears throat> uh, now, at this uh, period of time, we have an open market you can apply on different platforms that's uh, giving you a chance to apply for outside of your country jobs uh, on LinkedIn as well. Um, some people uh, go for Dubai, for example, to, to apply for jobs there. Uh, there are um, companies, uh, recruitment companies that offer you to find you a job outside of, uh, of your country. 
Egypt or uh, whatever the country you are uh, um, based in. So the, it, it all applies uh, on all the jobs. You have to present yourself well to understand exactly what are they looking for. The job description, the, the values, you have to read the job ad very, very well and present yourself and put yourself together to be the best match for this job. Uh, if, you, I, if you're asking about the, uh, the channels, as I've told you, many platforms offer, LinkedIn, uh, many other platforms, um, companies that offer you to find you a job outside, and I knew uh, personally people who went to, the, to Dubai, for example, and they found a job there uh, when they are uh, in the country itself. I hope I answered your question as well. Uh, really appreciate it. We have to learn more with you. Do you need to know everything we have learned or just the basics? Uh, do we need to know everything we have learned or just the basics? Abdel Fattah, if you can explain your question, uh, I don't understand what you mean. Okay, let me go for the Q and A's. I have here Abdul Rahman asking me uh, the juicy information. Thank you. This is a question that I hope you can help me with. I have a LinkedIn profile and I want to ask it to take a summer training opportunity from the people who work in my field, but I don't know how to start the talk or ask, uh, can you give me some tips, please? Sure. Um, Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's different ways you can do this. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure which country you are based in, but let me again give you an example in, uh, in Egypt. We have something called job fairs where you have different companies come together at uh, like a place. Okay, Egypt. Okay, very good. Uh, Job fairs in Egypt are held with different companies coming together and they are having booths. And in each booth, you will find HR persons from this company and they are offering um, their vacancies in their company. Okay, so if even you don't, uh, if even the vacancy you're looking for is not in the, is not presented or published in the, in the book for the job fair, you just need to go there and socialize with uh, them. It's very good if you have uh, a CV ready. Okay. It's, it's, it's going to be very good if you have a CV ready. I was telling you that uh, it's going to be a smart idea if you have a CV printed or a soft copy and you go to each HR person in the booth and ask them more about what are the um, vacancies that are uh, open or is going to be open in the future and give a brief uh, presentation about yourself. Remember from the story that you have already uh, ready for you and take their card and collect the cards of all the people in the place. And if you are an undergrad, you can ask them if they offer internships. This is one of the ways. Another way is to go about, uh, is to go for the companies that you know are open for internships and go and ask to meet someone in the HR field, uh, in the HR department, sorry, and you present yourself in the company itself. And I have a story about a group of people from engineering uh, faculty. Um, they came to me and they asked me to give them an opportunity to go and have uh, training in the field and actually I gave them the, this chance and we weren't having any interns at the time because we didn't have the time honestly to think about interns and when they came to me they were a group of 10 uh, engineers young engineers undergraduates and they asked me to give them this chance i i went there and talked to the project manager and he told me yes let's do this so you're opening opportunities for yourself we didn't have the intention, but we've see, we have seen that they are passionate and we gave them this space. <clears throat> and actually one of them is hired now in this, the same company. He, was, uh, he got um, everything needed and he, he, he did everything correctly and now he's hired in this company. Another thing is uh, using LinkedIn 
is uh, you can send a message to um, someone that you maybe uh, you know that this is the person you want to approach. You can send them a very uh, short, precise uh, message on LinkedIn, telling them, "Okay, I am. Uh, my name is uh, so and so, and I am an undergrad in so and so, and I need to see if you ha have intern opportunities or if we can have a quick." meeting or call. Now, most people respond. Most people respond and um, you, can, um, you, you can get yourself an intern through LinkedIn or any other channel that I have mentioned. Um, yes, Abdurrahman, uh, yes, this is exactly, yes, you have in, in, uh, in petroleum engineer, you have uh, uh, different different things that you can make use of to get an opportunity. <clears throat> if, some, if some companies offer us to work for apprentice after graduation, we use that kind of offer or not, ma'am. Um, what do you mean by work for apprentice? I'm sorry, if you can uh, explain. You mean a technical job, right? Or as an intern, not sure. Um, because of Corona, all people refuses to make internships. How to deal with that? Well, because of Corona, many people are working from home now. So, um, but I believe uh, people started to, to be more open now. Uh, not not uh, as in the middle of Corona, everything was closed, but now they, they have a percent of, uh, <clears throat> of employees at offices. So, um, if it's, uh, this is actually a very good question because it affected having internships going to fields. But I believe if you can check if there's a space for a virtual uh, internship, it's not going to be like you go to the field, but maybe to attend uh, maybe a, like a, a lecture or something with uh, one of the SMEs. And I believe it's going to be just um, decrease the amount, the the number of of interns uh, going to the field, not um, as much as before. <clears throat> but it's something that's uh, it's not in our control, so we have to deal with it. Just keep uh, digging more, keep applying more, and you will find the opportunity if you dig deeper and you are persistent. How do I leave a good memory when I join internship? I mean, as an HR, what attracts you to a person to hire? <laughs> it's a very good question, but we don't have a, like a Okay. Usually this question can apply to anything in life, not only to HR. You have to leave an impact. You have to communicate. You have to present yourself well. I, I, don't, I don't get attracted to a specific thing and um, on a personal level, but you have to present yourself well. And let me tell you why I'm saying this, because everybody's appreciated as they are. If, I, if you are an extrovert, if you are an introvert, uh, extrovert is a people who's sociable. He talks a lot. He, um, he, he, he's just outgoing. And an introvert is a person who is not necessarily into uh, people. He prefers to, um, to, to stay uh, quiet. So if I'm an introvert, I would prefer the introvert. No, not at all. At some jobs, uh, the introvert or different skill set is appreciated. And another job, different skill set is appreciated. But overall, a good communication skills is good for every, for, uh, every position. Good presentation skills is good for every position. So how to leave a good memory is just to be communicating. You can come and introduce yourself to me, tell me how your internship is going, uh, give me feedback about the company, about the supervisor that's handling uh, your intern. And by this, I remember you. And you can talk to me, just the communication. The secret is the communication, just communicate. Some companies always ask for your social media handles. Okay, I think I've answered this. And again, if I didn't answer it, uh, 
if if I'm not on um, if I didn't understand what do you mean by social media handles if they ask you for the Facebook account um, again I'm not sure if this is a good company to join or not can we have your LinkedIn username sure okay can I apply for a job if I don't meet the experience requirement? This is a very good question. Uh, thank you, Victory. I love your name. Okay. Uh, before you apply for any job, and this, this we're gonna talk about in the third session, when we're talking about um, how uh, you go for an interview. If you are applying for a job and you have um, a specific uh, knowledge or experience needed or stuff like this, you have you have a gap. Like here you are and the job, here it is, or example, here we are and this is the job requirements. You have to close the gap. And how can you do this? You already are working on yourself for, for, for all the years, but now you are a graduate and this is the job that you want to apply for. How are you going to close this gap? Some stuff is going to be in your hands, like getting maybe courses, certificates, gaining more knowledge. Okay, but experience, you have to do a hands-on experience, right? This is mainly the challenge that faces everybody. <clears throat> Let's say if you haven't applied for any interns and you didn't, um, you didn't get the experience needed. I'm just giving you a, like a scenario. If you didn't have the chance and you didn't get any interns and you didn't get the enough experience, you have to uh, apply for a junior position. Uh, many companies ask for junior positions for different reasons, but you will always find a, sp a place for you to apply for a junior position, <clears throat> okay? You will apply for a junior position that's only needed maybe uh, zero to one year of experience and you will start from there but never never uh, get depressed never give up maybe one of the companies only have a very strict uh, requirement on experience but you'll find another companies that is more uh, flexible and offers more opportunities on uh, for juniors but again it's in your hands to stay persistent to look up and have a good dig, digging uh, search uh, skills to, to, um, to keep searching, keep searching, have alerts on your platforms to notify you when there is a junior position. Um, and still stay, uh, stay on the looking for an intern for junior position, try to shadow for with experts without money. I did this myself. Um, I started the first very job I got as an HR. It was an intern, no money paid. I uh, like I had to compromise. I had to gain the experience in any way. I had a diploma in HR, I paid for it. <clears throat> I, then I needed an actual experience. So I had to compromise. So you have to be flexible about how you're going to put yourself out there to gain the experience needed. I hope I answered your question, Victory. <clears throat> Is there a chance to do an intern in Egyptian companies? By the way, I'm from Algeria. Um, sure, just again, check. Check uh, in all the companies that you're interested in if, if, you were, uh, if you can apply for an intern. And by the way, again, in this time, in this period of time, Everything is open. Social media has connected everybody. Um, and you can always apply for anything. So start uh, yeah, approaching companies and ask them for, um, OK, start. Uh, you can start to uh, approach the companies. Um, uh, guys, I love your interaction, honestly, and I'm really looking forward to meet you next uh, week with our second session on uh, how to present yourself in a CV. And um, looking forward to meet you uh, all next week with our second uh, session. Dr. Ahmed, thank you very much for, uh, for this uh, lovely group of people.
Dr. Yusra, thank you very much. And for sure, we'll see you again uh, next Saturday at the same time. Uh, guys, um, I will ask Dr. Yusra to uh, write you a short quiz, like maybe 10 multiple choice questions. And this question will be posted uh, on your uh, Google Classroom. Thank you very much and see you Saturday.